Yo, what's up, guys? This is PB and J with another episode. Today we'll be covering E3. The conference is wrapped up today. Now I'm here again with Jesse and Brian. Hey, so um, I finally gave in, and I, you know, you guys know I have a PS4, and I skipped. I had an Xbox 360, but that was years ago, and it broke down on me like twice. But today I finally gave in, and I got the uh, Xbox One to add to my my uh, living room collection. You got the Xbox One S? The S, yeah. The SX, X3, 7, S, 360. X, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't want to wait for the uh, the the X? No, I mean, we'll, we'll get into it later, but from the from the titles that they showed us from the conference, there wasn't anything that was that impressive other than Forza Motorsport 7. But I'm okay if, if it's not running yet. 4K and 60 frames a second when it does come out. So I, I, I think I'll be okay with the, the S. Does your TV play 4K? Yeah, it does. Yeah, so I, I bought the Xbox One S because I, during Black Friday, I bought a couple of movies. One of them happens to be Batman vs. Superman um, in in Ultra Blu-ray because it was the same price as the regular Blu-ray. So might as well just, you know, same price, might as well get the better version. Yeah, then when I took it home, I, I thought it would work on the PS4, and it doesn't. Um, so that's why I ended up waiting for the for the for E3 to see if Sony would make any announcement. Hopefully, with the Pro, for them to say that you know we're going to make a new version of the Pro that supports Ultra Blu-ray, but that didn't happen. So that that was why I pulled the trigger today to to get the Xbox. But watch on Saturday. They're like, oh, guess what? Yeah, that's fine. I can. <laughs> I can return it. <laughs> I, I'm, not even, I, I'm not even worried about that. You really cared about having an ultra Blu-ray of Superman vs. Batman? <laughs> well, that's, what, that's what we should be concerned about. That that you're like, the difference between Blu-ray and ultra Blu-ray. Well, crap. yeah. Well, I, I want to see the crap in like higher resolution to see if it's, you know... More crappier, or, or the same. Or <laughs> you, you just want to get to the to the Wonder Woman section. Yeah. Pause it in 4K. So yeah, so I'll just like uh, go off topic for a bit. But the version I bought for the Ultra Blu-ray, it has the extended version of the movie only on the 4K version, but not the Blu-ray version that comes with it. So that that was kind of weird. But looking forward to getting the Xbox so I can watch those. Extra twenty minutes of nonsense that they added. For <laughs> <me>. <laughs> Not enough for the games. You're like, I want to see that twenty minutes of crap. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm just wondering why you could have just told me, and I would have probably just downloaded those twenty minutes for you instead of paying like. But not four K, dude. Not in four K. Actually, I could have. It's not the same. <laughs> <laughs> no, what other what other game? What other movies did you have? Um, I got Planet Earth 2. It's supposed to look really good in 4K, so that's why I got that one when it came out. That's the one where like all all these different animals. Yeah. The world. So that's just been those two movies I've been sitting on my shelf, just waiting until I get the the Blu-ray player. So now you have the Blu-ray player and Halo. No, no Halo. <laughs> I, don't plan, I don't plan to add that to my library. <laughs> it's Halo, man. Yeah, I'll, I'll get uh, Gears of War 4. That that one, um, I'll definitely get. Brian, I'd have to say, uh, kind of disappointed me by getting the Xbox. But that's okay. You just that just means more games to play. Yeah, yeah like three more games <laughs> that, I'll be playing that, that you won't be able to play. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of games, we just had uh, E3. Um, let's get into it. Let's talk about E3. We'll just start off with the first conference that they had on Saturday, which was EA. What do you think? What do you think about that conference, Brian? Okay, so I'll talk about the good and the bad, and then I will give it a grade. Uh, and, and I'll probably do the do the same thing for all all the conferences that we're going to talk about. All right, sounds good. Okay, so with EA, you know they they pretty much like open up uh, E three by going first, and you know they they kept the audience uh, in engaged by teasing Star Wars Battlefront. Two right from the beginning. I don't, I don't know why they did that. Well, at least in the beginning, I didn't know why. But the more I watched it, the more I, I realized <laughs> why they did that. You know, they 
Because if they if they show that first, if they show Battlefront two first, I would probably stop watching after it. But you know, so you know, they show the usual stuff, uh, Madden eighteen, FIFA eighteen, and they brought out the two guys from Men and Blazers. You guys don't follow soccer, I'm guessing, but they're pretty popular. Um, you know, they make a lot of jokes and oh, they, those are. Those two British two guys? guys? Yeah, the British guys. Okay, I was—I didn't know who they were. Yeah, I, was, I, was, I didn't know what was going on. Yeah, so, yeah, but when it came out, like, their their humor didn't really come through when they were on stage, so it, it didn't really work out. And then they had this thing where they had, like, all these demo stations all set up inside the, the place, so their whole seating thing looked kind of weird. But I, I get what they're going for. They wanted the people in attendance to be able to play those games right after it, it was kind of weird for the viewer, though, like for, for me to be streaming it and then seeing that kind of stuff. And then they would kind of bounce it off to different people as if um, it's kind of like a, I don't know, like those like charity events where they will have a host <laughs> and then they would bounce it off to another person to talk about something else. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, the one thing I noticed that, that stood out to me was that one guy, I guess he's like a YouTuber or something. He was on camera, and then and when it pointed at him, he just freaked out, I guess. And yeah. He just kept, he was like, uh, uh, uh. And the camera just stayed on him, which was hilarious. But, but you saw I got through it. Game-wise, they showed, other than Madden and FIFA, they showed a DLC for Battlefield 1 in the name of the star. That, that game looks pretty cool, that DLC. Um, if you're into that game, I think adding that content will extend the life of it, and... I played through the story and I thought it was okay. Playing multiplayer, the map is too big, and I'm not skilled enough to yeah, it's freaking, survive in multiplayer. It's freaking hard, man. As soon as you spawn, yeah. you die. Yeah, so I mean, it, it looks good though, but I'm not sure if it's for me. And then they showed um, Need for Speed Payback, which looked really interesting. I actually really liked it because they they made a racing game it to have objectives where you're not just racing from start to end. You know, they the, the clip that they showed, they're, like, trying to heist a car from a truck. So I, I, I like the whole objective part of the game. But I wonder if the entire game will be like that, or if that was just, that level was created just for the demo. And then this other game called A Way Out, about two guys, I guess, are breaking out of prison. It's an interesting concept. It's like a two-player where you can couch co-op or play online, I guess. So you have to use a two-player's to work together to break break out of prison or, or meet these different objectives. The guy who, who was on stage talking about the game was really excited about it. And to me, it I don't know. I don't know if it was a graphics or, or it just didn't look like it was my type of game. So I wasn't that interested in it. And then they brought back the game that should die um, <laughs> every single year, uh, NBA Live. I thought it was dead. So they, I was like, I thought it was gone. Yeah, it, it looked... It's, it still looks really bad, you know, like the, they show that demo where like LeBron had the ball and then he, he's trying to like dribble past Kevin Durant and it's like image wise, it looks really good, but then their face looks like, you know, there's no reaction to it. And then you got to do all these moves with the stick to kind of like do all your, your dribble, dribble drive and all that stuff. It's just way too complicated. And, and I get that, right? Like they want to unseat like NBA 2K and be the leader in basketball since they were able to. Because they were able to do that with uh, FIFA, they they used to be um, always behind with this game by Konami, I think, called PES, which yeah. is a soccer game. Yeah, I remember and that. Everybody played the game, and now like FIFA is like the major, like the main soccer game that everyone plays now. So I, I get the attempts, but I don't know. From what I saw, it, it just still looked like they were a few years away from that. At the end of the show, towards the end, they, they showed they just teased uh, this game called Anthem by Bioware. They didn't really show much, at least in in the EA conference. Followed by like half an hour of Battlefront 2, which looks looks cool. I mean, I, I think I'll pick it up. I, I like that they announced they they announced that there's no season pass, but I just read recently that they might have a lot of these microtransactions. So we'll we'll see how how that game looks. But so far. From what I saw, like the single player is what I'm really after. That that new story that they added to the game. So overall, for this conference, I give it a C, I guess. I mean, there there wasn't really anything that was new, new other than Anthem, but, but they didn't really show anything for that game because they they saved it for another conference, um, which we will get into later. But yeah, for for EA to kick off E3 
Um, I think they they just did okay, um, so I would give it a C. So, so John, what did you, what did you think? No, uh, yeah, I'm about to agree with you. Um, I, I give it a C. Uh, same thing, you know, to to kick off E3. I'm, I was, you know, everyone's excited to, for E3 to get cracking, and I know I was. I sat down all excited to watch the conference, and it was pretty bleh, you know. It was all about Battlefront 2. That was the whole conference. It was it was about Battlefront 2. They teased you in the beginning to keep you there sitting and watching, and then the whole last half hour was Battlefront 2. And it looks good. Like the they had brought in the story mode. I mean, the first one, the first one looks great, like graphics wise. When you when you're playing it, you feel like you're in the in the world of Star Wars and stuff. They have just yeah, they have all the sound effects. Down yeah, too. yeah. It's like oh man, I'm in the movie, but it gets old really fast because there's just nothing to it. So I'm glad they listened and they added uh, the story mode and stuff, and the graphics look even better. And then they brought in uh, characters from the prequels, so you can be playing as like Dar- like they're showing Darth Maul a lot. Like he looked really cool. Yeah. There, was um, like a young, there was like a young Yoda too. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it looks great, but that was pretty much the focus of the whole conference. Yeah, they show FIFA, which of course is FIFA every year, and it's great. Madden, it's the same thing every year. No, Need for Speed, okay, seems okay. Like the the game, the way a way out with the two player thing, that like, kind of sounds like a interesting concept. Same thing. I don't know if it's for me. I don't really like co op games. I like playing by myself. And they showed a little bit of the Anthem, which is like a cross between Destiny um, with mechs or exosuits, and you know that looks cool too. But they didn't show a whole lot, like you said. And then they dropped a little bit of Battlefield 1. I have Battlefield 1. Battlefield 1's fun. I like the story mode. So this is cool to get a little more story because the multiplayer, like I said, I just spawn in the game and get killed by a 12-year-old really fast. So I don't like playing the multiplayer too much. But overall, though, and it was long, right? The conference? Over an hour. Felt long. Felt Yeah, yeah it I felt, over- yeah, yeah. felt really long. So uh, kind of a disappointing way to kick off E3. So same thing. I have to give, uh, I have to give the EA panel uh, C. All right. Well, while you guys have been talking... I didn't have time to see it earlier, but I'm watching it live, if you want to call it live. I'm obviously not going to be able to give it a full grade because of the fact that I'm not going to watch it off while we're recording the podcast. But I watched the Battlefront uh, section. I thought it was really cool. The demo that they're portraying, the girl that they have, I guess she's one of the actresses. Uh, she's one of the girls in the thing. Holy hop. <laughs> I like I like how they came out with the whole Stormtroopers and stuff like that. That was pretty dope. The game looks really good. I'm just hoping that they showed us uh, a few spots where they have the X-Wing, they have the Atlantic Falcon. I'm hoping that was just video. I, I would be cool if they actually let you play some of that, but it seems like it's more of like a Call of Duty type thing. It's like a lot of shooting and stuff, which looks good, though. I, 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 I liked it. There's also, like you said, some video of uh, Yoda versus uh, Darth Maul. Now, is that something? And also... Uh, I think Ray versus uh, her cousin. So I'm wondering if that's actually gameplay or that's just like cutscene. Oh no, it'll so. be it'll be gameplay. Gameplay. The the way those games work is like you have your your team against my team, and then we each pick a hero that we want to play with. And so let's say yeah. I pick Han Solo and you pick Ray, and so during the game we'll we'll meet up and we'll fight each other. Yeah, but how much interaction do you actually have? You press. Is it like Street Fighter type where you control more of the activity, or is it you just fight by dogs? You know. It's it's a shooting game basically. You're running around shooting, and then you do have special moves with your character, and they're stronger than and they're stronger than the other soldiers. So you have more life and stuff, and cause more damage. Um, like I said, looking at it, it was it looked pretty good, but unfortunately, I I, I had, you guys just basically did a spoiler alert for me for the rest of the show. <laughs> so I'm like I'm gonna stop checking out uh, right right at the end of the battlefront when the chick comes back out. So, uh, we'll we'll keep it there, and then. Uh, We'll go ahead and talk to about the next conference while I catch up. <laughs> hey Jesse, you think they'll bring up any of those uh, characters that are non-canon now? Oh and- yeah, we talked about that earlier. There's Admiral Grand Admiral Thrawn. I mean, okay, so this is kind of off topic in a way, but we've talked about it before. Where I play the Facebook games, and there's a Star Wars game there, and there was a leak. Uh, it's also I, I think it's also EA. I'm not positive. If, if the, yeah, I think it is EA. But the, uh, there was a leak that they're going to go ahead and introduce a new storyline, and there was a leak of Grand Admiral Thrawn. So that would be cool if they're doing it for a Facebook game. Why can't they do it for a kick-ass PS4 game? Well, they, um, I, don't know if you, I don't know if you know, but the cartoon, the Star Wars Rebels, they brought him in, so he's in canon now. They made him canon? Uh, <laughs> but that's before. It's not the same storyline. No, it's not. It's not. Who... He's, he's in this new Rebels cartoon, so it's not the, the books you read and you wasted your time reading because they don't count anymore. 
All the books. All the books. <laughs> that were previously authorized by Lucasfilm. Uh, for, for those fans like us, you know, who, who read, we know that Chewie died. And like you had said, that the reason that they decided to go against canon is to bring Chewie back for these films. I love you, Chewie, but you killed a bunch of storylines. <laughs> A bunch of good characters. Are we going to see Mara Jade the same way? Are we going to have Grand Admiral Thrawn? Obviously not. My, my problem is I had to play through two games of The Force Unleashed, and I can't get that back. <laughs> <laughs> see? You guys, you guys, you guys, look at some, come on, what now? Well, technically, technically now, Disney, you know, fix it. Use, use uh, Tinkerbell, fix it back. For, for all you for all you fans out there, if if you ever run into Jesse, get the guy a drink. He spent all that time reading all those books, yeah. all of them. When we say all of them, all of them, every yeah. single Star Wars novel, and then Disney crushes dream and wiped them out from existence. Yeah. Sometimes I feel bad, but then I remember it's Jesse, and I don't feel bad anymore. So anyway, I, I need something to read, right? <laughs> At least I don't buy them all. <laughs> Support your public libraries. <laughs> Okay, so on to our next conference, which was the Microsoft conference. Since Brian's a fanboy now, he's going to give the uh, conference an A+. Plus. I'm going to go first, give it an unbiased opinion. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But uh, this conference was a little weird. Their big focus this time around was the new Xbox One X, the super powerful console that they announced a couple years ago. It's, uh, it can play 4K games on top of other specs that we'll have Jesse explain in a little bit that I don't understand. All I know is that's really powerful, more powerful than the PS4, more powerful than PS4 Pro. So they really, really hammered home how powerful it was. And the running joke throughout the conference was how many times would they say the word teraflops, right? It was like, it was almost like a drinking game. It was, yeah, teraflops, 4K. I mean, there's there's other things that they keep repeating, but I'll, I'll wait until I get to get back to me for, and I'll get into it. Yeah, and so they keep repeating and, and really hammering home how powerful this thing was and then they didn't have any games for it. The first, the only, the only true 4K game they had was Morza or Morza, Forza, Motorsport Seven. They show this, they show that game and it looked amazing. I was like, right. wow, they look real. This is like a real car and real people. And they show the driving levels and you know the rain effects. Everything looked great. After they were done showing that, they went to Metro, the new game, uh, Metro Exodus, the uh, first person shooter game, and that game looked really good. Well, not really good, it looked great. And then that was it. After that, it was just a lot of indie games, games like Minecraft 4 or 4K, Sea of Thieves, and some other ones. And those type of games don't really show off the power of the system. Kind of have an animated style to them, kind of cartoonish. And then the other games they showed, like uh, Assassin's Creed, the new Assassin's Creed Origin, Shadow of War, the Lord of the Rings game. They weren't true 4K games. They were other third-party games that, that the system up It gives it a bump. Uh, so it's kind of weird that they, you know, they really pushed this really powerful new system and then didn't have much to show for it. So the beginning of the conference was really cool. It was showing this new, this new powerful system. Oh man, Forza looks great. Metro looks great. And then it just kind of dies the middle of the conference. It starts showing all like a ton of these games. I don't remember a lot of them, but they were all more indie style games. Some of them were Xbox exclusive. Some weren't, but definitely the games I, I wouldn't play. They didn't look interesting to me. Maybe more, I think that because the Xbox is so heavily uh, crossed over with the Windows 10, right? Yeah. I, I think they're really starting to cater towards uh, PC gamers. And so they're showing a lot of games you normally see on the PC on the Xbox. And towards the end of the conference, I was like, okay, well, they got to show something. Something else for the for the new Xbox One X. Either just uh, a Halo, something with Halo, something with Gears of War, uh, something to really push the the system, and they didn't. It just kind of ended. So kind of a weird conference for me. I'll give it a B uh, because they did show a lot of games, a ton of games. Uh, nothing really that jumps out at me that I was like, oh, man, I got to play that. Like, I don't have an Xbox. I have to go get Xbox now for that game. Nothing like that. And then another, what lowers the grade too, was the, was the cost of the system. It was $500. If you already had an Xbox... And you paid five hundred dollars, and you got to pay five hundred dollars again. And for someone who has their own, like, like me, who doesn't have an Xbox, and I had my PlayStation for four hundred dollars, do I want to pay five hundred dollars for a system that doesn't have any games and what I'm not really a big fan of? So I thought that's kind of, kind of, kind of high, kind of pricey. So I'm probably not going to run out and buy it. I'll stick with my PlayStation. And if I had to get an Xbox, I'd probably do what Brian did and get the 
Xbox One, Xbox One S, which is how much was that? Like two fifty. Two fifty. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 a lot. That's a half the price, and it's still gonna play great game, great looking games. And for someone like me who has a a TV that uh, upreses four K games, I don't have to go out and get a pure four K because my TV will up upres. It's not gonna be f- true four K. But it is going to look better than HD. Not really worth investing for me anyway. So uh, that's what I think about the conference. Great looking new powerful system. Games a little underwhelming. So I'll give it a B grade. Okay. So since um, I'm the fanboy around here now, you, you'll probably be surprised. But I also give this one a C. Uh, same as EA. Um, and the reason is because I was really, maybe it's because of the disappointment level, which caused me to give it this grade. Um, but out of the entire E3 conference schedule, I was really looking forward to this one because, you know, this was their year for to announce Scorpio. So they had all the momentum and it, you know, there were no other rumors from Sony saying that they were going to, were going to do anything on the console level after the PS Pro came out. So they pretty much like Microsoft owned this E3 if they really took advantage of it. So I was really looking forward to it. And they started the show awesome. You know, they, I, I like the stage setup where they were where like Phil Spencer and everyone who spoke stood in the middle of the, of the, of the place. And they have this 4k big screen TV behind, behind, uh, behind them so that everyone in the audience could see how awesome all these games look. And that was what they were pushing for, right? Like 4k, yeah. Yeah. 60 frames a second, all that stuff. And when they show for the, uh, uh, Motorsport 7, I was blown away. I, I thought that looked amazing. Yeah, it looked great. And then they, yeah, and then they went into the... And then they even like debut a, a, a Porsche 911 or whatever, a, a Porsche, because that game is so popular that you know Porsche debuted a game, a, a car. For yeah, that game. a real car so on that, stage. Yeah, that was awesome. And then after that, I guess they... So that after that, they, they start going into the hardware specs. And again, I'll defer to like Jesse later. He can go on, go into all the nerd specs. But um, for most people, like like us, just casual gamers, just gamers in general, we're not PC kind of gamers. So we're like the casual couch like gamers where we just play out of convenience instead of sitting in front of a of a computer to play. Um, so yeah, I mean we're we're probably missing out on a lot of awesome games, but I'm okay with just uh, having whatever's available on xbox or, or or playstation and after they you know they show the spec okay it looks awesome all all that means to me is 4k and and like a lot of processing power so and like you said after after they showed off uh, force uh, there weren't any other games to back up, up xbox one x it's pretty much like oh here it is and then now now let's go to let's go into all the games that we're going to have coming out and then the, the conference went into this like really like a lull, I guess. They they showed a collection of games that that lasted for about an hour, I think. Yeah, it was a long time. An hour. And and the one thing um, I was joking with you about was that you know they when the show started, whenever any time they previewed a, a clip, it would say world premiere. Yeah. So in the beginning, it was awesome, <laughs> right? But then by the twentieth time, it got really got old really quick. <laughs> And then when it got to the middle part, they started showing Xbox exclusive or, or exclusive, and then they'll show the clip. That got old really quick, and they were all games that were not that interesting. And they looked like uh, games that could be played on the Xbox One S or, or whatever. It, it didn't need to be powerful to run. Um, it didn't it look like it was graphic demanding or anything like that. I think they dropped the ball on that. And yeah, it just ran way too long. But I, I, I held out hope. Um, I was expecting for them to show, to end the end the show with something awesome at the end, and they show Anthem again. So I mean, I saw Anthem like a teaser earlier in the day with EA, and then they come back and show it again, but with more stuff. I don't know. For me, that game didn't look that interesting to me either. I I, I don't like the parts where they were flying around in the exosuit. So I I thought that looked a little bit weird. Maybe that's the Destiny killer game that Bioware is going for, but. From what I saw so far, I didn't think that it was that impressive. So, yeah, with the Xbox One X, right, it's I was I was a little disappointed about it. Other than the hardware specs, like it didn't do really do anything else. Maybe in two or three years, when we look back and they have a bunch of titles where they can 
visually showed you side by side how awesome it looks, then maybe um, it'll catch on. But for the first year, I don't see it selling well, especially yeah. when yeah, and and it's at a really weird price point, right? Where it comes out at five, you know, four ninety nine, where you when when you can just go out and go to the store today and buy a Xbox One S for two fifty, so that's half the price. Right, if you're comparing it within the same console family, but it even if you compare it to the PlayStation Pro, it's still a hundred dollars extra. And for what you know, you're getting true 4K 60 frames a second. Maybe in two or three years that'll matter, but for now, you know, most people they don't have a 4K TV, so it's going to be hard to justify spending that extra two hundred fifty dollars if you already own an Xbox or the extra hundred dollars when compared to the PS Pro. Yeah, I mean, that's another game, right? You can you can buy a PS4 Pro and then a game right, right off the bat. Yeah, and, and one other thing is, like, you know, when they started showing all these games, one thing I noticed pretty quickly was av- available on Xbox One and Windows 10 Store. So, you know, so the first game I saw, I'm like, okay, that's cool. I guess uh, Force I was the first one to show that little tag on the bottom left corner of the screen. And then they start showing it for every single game they showed. So that also brings another question. Do you really really need to buy Xbox One X if you already have a pretty powerful console, at, I mean, a PC at home? You know, because if, if I'm playing PC games, I'm going, you know, most people would go pretty, pretty in on, like, the hardware specs, right? So it may even run better than the, the Xbox One X. So what's the point of buying buying that console? You know, they in a way, they're, they're kind of killing themselves by making this available to to the PC gamers, you kind of shoot themselves in the foot, right? Yeah, I mean, I if mean, if you have a decent yeah. yeah, if you have a decent gaming rig already and a 4K monitor, you don't need a X One Wux X. You don't need it. So I, I don't know how like what the demographic is for those pe- people who who are not PC gamers, but they want that full 4K 60 frames per second experience. Well, maybe in two or three years they'll have a price drop and and we'll see what happens, but. For now, like for for today, doesn't look good, um, in my opinion. Yeah, so Jesse, I think you've been checking out the specs. Um, how powerful is this thing? I am so glad that you asked. I've actually <laughs> been listening to both of you guys talk. And there's been a few times where I want to interject, but I, you know, I don't want to go ahead and step over each other. Okay, so first I want to hit a, a couple of things before I go to talk about the specs. One, I'm not sure if you guys are aware, but Xbox or Microsoft itself, is trying to go ahead and do cross cross uh, platform gaming. They've even kind of opened the door to PS4 and telling them like we're open to do cross platform gaming with other vendors. Kind of like throwing it to PS4 to create like for example uh, Rocket League uh, that you can go ahead and play if you play it online. You can play it on an Xbox as well as somebody has Windows 10. That's that's what you guys were talking about. Are they shooting themselves in the foot? Because now you have a, the the PC consoles uh, with Windows 10, and then you have the uh, console the games with Xbox. What they're trying to do is integrate the, the different levels of people. So if you're at home and you have a console, you get to play against somebody who's on the PC. That's what their agenda is, and ha- having that. There's always going to be problems with that, though, because technically a PC can be much faster than the console because the console doesn't get developed or, or, or doesn't get new technology maybe every three, four years. So technically a PC user can have a heads up. And I think that's the reason why they made this one a little bit more accelerated because if you go ahead and take a look at the specs, and I know you guys are making fun of the, the teraflops and stuff like that, <laughs> but it, it does it does make uh, a lot of sense when you're playing high-intensity high, uh, games. I'm looking at the specs, and the Xbox One S is 1.4 teraflops versus the Xbox One X is going to be six teraflops. That's like four times the the, the performance. And and to compare it to the PS4, uh, that's only 4.2 teraflops. So even that is maybe one and a half uh, faster. Uh, this has memory like up the gazoo. It has a 12 gigs <laughs> of DDR5 memory. Uh, for those people who don't know me, I'm a computer nerd. And I, like looking at the specs on here, it's like, wow, this is a really nice PC, except it's an Xbox. It, I, I don't like AMD. They they they, they go with the AMD uh, chipsets, 
So I've not gotten a main piece since, you know, they dropped the ball years ago. But, you know, for gaming rigs, that's fine. They're, they're trying to push um, virtual reality on this, 4K. That's kind of what, what they're doing. They're going to, to the future. And you guys are right. It's like, why would I want to go and spend this much money from Xbox One S to an Xbox One X? And it, this is geared to the people who are into into advancements, into being first uh, players of, of technology. And you guys are saying that there's not many games. I just looked at GameStop. There's like 53 games that are designed for the Xbox X. Obviously, they're, they're cross-playable uh, with a with a with the S, or I should say, with a regular Xbox One, uh, but uh, they're not going to take advantage of the 4K capability. No, they're just going to they're going to upres it as much as they can. Yeah, and and I mean, I'm looking at some of the good titles. I mean, Dead Rising Four, the the Forza Motorsports Seven, I guess, talking about Gears of War Four, uh, Halo Wars Two, and you guys might not like the teams, but these are some of the best. I mean, Injustice Two, Injustice Two just came out. I don't know about Minecraft. Why would you need Minecraft? <laughs> okay. That is like the shittiest graphics anyway. Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. Rocket League, which I love that game. So there's, 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 they might not have released that information during the conference, but looking at uh, GameStop, except they have uh, about 53 games that have the 4K support. Uh, and they're designed to be for the Xbox uh, One X. And like I said, it might be that they just, they, sh- they should have put this on, on, or mention it more in the conference, but how are you going to talk about 53 games and mostly when one of them is freaking... Yeah, uh, but the thing is, those 53 games, probably two or three of them are only exclusive to Xbox. Um, no, and, but you got to remember, that happens with every new technology. When you go from when you went from PS3 to PS4, there was always that that time frame where it's like, why do I need to go PS4 and spend $200 more when, when I can still... No, I mean... They're, they're yeah. exclusive, exclusive games always take a while for when you get a new console and this is technically a new console because they're re- they're rebranding it as an x you know and you know whatever but it's technically a new console for microsoft no that, that's that's not what i mean i mean well john can probably help jump in and explain a little bit more but a lot of these titles they're also available on ps4 i mean the graphics may not be the same but they're not exclusive to only xbox i don't care if it's s or x and that's a problem that that we have with it you know there's other than Halo or Gears of War and Forza, a lot of these games are also available in, in the other consoles. So that's why it's, for me, it, it took me so long to finally get one. And, and buying the console, you know, the main point wasn't really even to get the console. It was for the, the Ultra Blu-ray player. <laughs> you know, so. and, but, but that's because you're not really uh, a big fan of, of Xbox anyway. You're more of a fan of PS4. And PS4... No, I- no, I'm I'm neutral because like uh, before I bought the PS3, I had an Xbox 360. Um, because at the time they were kicking butt, you know, like PS3 were doing pretty bad in the beginning. Then after a while, like like Sony started building up this exclusive library. Um, they had games like Uncharted, and I mean I, I can go on and on like God of War. Like all of these games are only available on on Sony, and right. you know with the whole trophy system and achievements for Xbox. Like once you start collecting like creating a profile and you're spending a lot of time in one ecosystem you don't want to uh, spread yourself thin by jumping back and forth in both so if i, I want to the... i'm sorry go ahead yeah so if i want to play like a game that's available in both consoles i would rather play on on the playstation because yeah. I, I want to keep out all everything in one ecosystem and so i mean both of these consoles both, both of these companies they they try to do your do their best to kind of like get you to buy the games in their con. So, be, so you can use their ecosystem. And for me, the biggest problem is that uh, Microsoft doesn't have that big of an exclusive library. And now they're opening it up to all the PC gamers too, which is not a problem. But I just question, like, is this going to be profitable for them in the future? If, you know, whether or not they're going to be getting all the, all the money that they would make from licensing all these titles. I and mean, maybe they will, you know, because they just expanded the market to the, to the PC market. Well, then that's, and that's what I'm saying. Their, their main goal, or, or, or from what I read a few months ago, is they want to go ahead and do the cross-platform. So if you have an Xbox 360, your information... I'm sorry, not 360, I don't know why I said that. If you have the Xbox One, and you, play, you you have your little profile, that will carry over to your PC gaming. So you said, like you said yourself, you have certain achievements, certain maybe you, you, you win some 
um, tools or whatever the case might be, and it's exclusive to that console only. But now they want to go into cross uh, cross platform, so you can go and have one um, overall. So if you if you play on on Windows 10, if you play on Xbox One, and I guess next uh, Xbox One X, then your profile care goes around with you. Yeah. Um, and, and like I said, and then not only that, with multiplayer games, you get to play against people who don't have an Xbox One. You play somebody who's on a PC. Like I said, that's a that's a different arena where people say PC uh, gamers have a little bit more advantage than console players. But nowadays, that's getting slimmer and slimmer because a lot of it before was uh, PCs better at you know uh, internet gaming. You 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 had less hiccups or whatever, or the frames per second. But now looking at these, these specs, I mean, it's going to definitely reduce like lag time and all this. And, you know, internet wise, whether you're playing on a PC or a console now, it's basically the same. You're not going to have the same latency and stuff like that issues that you had before. So okay. I don't know. I, I, I'm thinking, like I said, it's it's just they're trying to grow and consolidate. And like I said, they've, they've invited a base station unofficially to go ahead and have games that will be cross platform so you can play uh, somebody, uh, you know, across the world on an Xbox while you're on your PS4, the same game. So I don't know if yeah. that's going to be successful, but we'll see. Yeah. yeah, so that gives me more reason more reason not to play on the Xbox, right? I mean, you, you just proved my point there. Like on a separate, like slightly different topic, like there's a lot of discussion about Destiny, which I, I you know, the game that I play all the time. Um, there's a lot of concerns because they're going to bring it in where it's cross-platform between PC, Xbox, and PS4. And obviously the PC players are going to have a competitive advantage. So there's a lot of concern about that, but people are, you know, they have the, the wait and see mentality. So, it, you know, it's nice that they're making it available to everybody, but then that gives me more, like less reason to buy Xbox. I, I can just go out and spend a decent amount of money, buy a decent computer, which I can use to do other things other than play games. And I can play all the games I want from the Xbox library. There's no point to get yeah, the console, but, right? That's what you're saying. Yeah, but yeah, but the thing is, you know the difference between playing on a PC and playing on a console. It, a playing on a console is a lot easier in a way. I think so. I mean, like if if I had a choice between, and I'm a PC guy, if if I had the choice to play on a console and a PC, I'd rather play on a console. And and um, one thing when you when you're talking about Destiny. They understand that there's going to be a difference in um, in, in frame play. They're actually uh, kind of using like a governor on it. All systems will be running at the same uh, FPS. So it doesn't matter if you're driving. So that's kind of bad for the people who have Xbox One X because you obviously wouldn't want to take the advantage of it. But they are looking at, since this is a cross-platform game, they want to make it even and equal amongst all players. So that's kind of cool for, for gameplay, like so no one has advantage, but at the same time, it sucks because you paid, like you said, a hundred dollars right. more. Yeah. So why get the X then? And like, so I mean, you 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 keep giving me these reasons why you're you're talking it down like indirectly. I know you're like all for it, but <laughs> you're giving me these reasons like. Oh, I, I don't I don't care either way. I wouldn't buy one anyway. I, no, I, I know. I know. <laughs> I, no, I mean, I, what, I'm talking, saying, but... what I'm just saying is this this happens with each evolution of of of, of consoles. <laughs> You're in that between. You always have that in between time between the time you you can. They're gonna lower the price on it, so obviously. And at that point, then you're gonna be like, okay, I'm gonna go to buy it. So Xbox is, is not stupid. Microsoft is not stupid. They're not gonna lose money on this. It's 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 a transition time. So they're gonna have to. Uh, like I said, I'm I'm not I'm not really arguing for either point. I'm just I guess trying to state the facts that this has always happened through each generation of of new consoles. And like so Xbox, not gonna. I mean, Microsoft's not gonna get hurt. Not gonna hurt at all. Like what I said earlier, they only show one game that really showed off the new like consoles processing speed. Maybe if they had like a couple more titles, then we would. I think there would be a lot more excitement. But right now, they you know, it's that it's as if um they designed they have the console, but then they only have one game available for it, and that was it. You know, so it kind of doesn't really give you much hope to look for, like doesn't give you anything to look forward to. And like I said, like maybe in two years from now, that, you know, we need all that power that the, the that the X has. But for today, we, we don't need it, you know? So 
I, I don't know. I mean, when it comes out, we'll, we'll see how, how it does. Um, but I, I'm just not sure if Microsoft is making the right move by making it available on Windows 10. But I, I, I actually applaud them for that. But I, I, I think, I'm thinking that you're going you're gonna to see the same thing that happens with all these other products. You have Sheep. Look at Apple. When you go from one phone to another, differences sometimes are very slim. Mm-hmm. And you have thousands of people online for the next for, for the next best thing, which is not not work, really worth the seven hundred dollar price tag. You're gonna you're gonna have the same thing with Xbox X. When it comes out, you're gonna have people jumping from the Xbox 360 to that versus you know. They might have skipped like maybe the, the the first generation of the Xbox One. I mean, I'm saying that you're gonna probably get more purchases from those people than you would people who already bought the Xbox One. Like mm-hmm. you said, who's gonna who's gonna pay another four or five hundred bucks when they just paid two ninety nine, you know, a few months before? But you 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 still have early developers. I mean, th- those are the people who are gonna jump to this, and then all the sheep that oh my god, it's nice and shiny, and I can play Minecraft on four K. <laughs> I mean that's that's what you're gonna get. I mean, like, and like I said, I don't. I, I like I said, I have thought uh, Microsoft makes making a uh, uh, Windows 10 playing available because that way, like I said, it introduces people to a larger audience. Like you got more competitors now. You know, it what I'm and I'm talking about not the single player games, but the ones that are designed for multiplayer. Right. You know, like Madden or. Or, you know, I don't know what other games are out there that are multiplayer, but I'm just thinking like the football games and stuff like that you get to play against other people. And there's not going to be an advantage, on, on, you know, if you're a PC player there versus a console player there. Or Rocket League. Come on. I, there's, I, I, in 4K, is not going to make a difference in all the gameplay. It's just going to look nice. And- all right. So I hate to cut off this, uh, this debate here, but we still have half of a convention to go. We'll let Jesse run out and get his Xbox One X right now. Yeah, <laughs> and we'll move on to the Bethesda conference, which was uh, a Saturday night. Um, you know, I actually, I actually liked this conference. It was, um, it was weird. It was, it was late. It was like nine o'clock on Saturday night, uh, or was it Sunday night? Sunday night. But it was short and sweet. They came out. Bethesda came out, showed their games, and just got out of there. I mean, the conference was like forty-five minutes tops, um, and they showed some really cool stuff. The 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 big one that they kicked off with was Wolfenstein Two. And that look, that game looked really cool. The story looks uh, way cra- crazy. Uh, the Nazis had uh, taken over the U.S. after World War II, and you you play as like a freedom fighter. That's kind of selling it short. When you actually see the demo they showed, there was a lot of a lot of personality in the game. The characters are really interesting. Uh, it made me want to play this game. Like I, I gotta see what's going on here. Uh, and then the, the gameplay itself was really good. Old school first person. I mean, it's the same guys that made the Doom game from last year. Um, so. I'll, Really, really impressed by Wolfenstein too, and they show some VR stuff with Fallout Four. I'm not a Fallout guy, so I really wasn't too interested in that. But they showed a Doom uh, game for VR that looked really cool. Anything with Doom, I'm down for. They announced Skyrim on the Switch. Cool uh, mod, not a mod, but a cool outfit with uh, Link. You can your guy can uh, can dress up as Link in the game. Uh, so that was pretty cool. And then I don't think you guys played it, but they they uh, announced Evil Within two. Uh, with a really big fan of the first game, really trippy. If you can watch the game game trailer for that, go for it. I I highly recommend it. It's really crazy looking, kind of an action horror game, kind of reminiscent of Resident Evil Four. I think the the creator of the Evil Within was uh, one of the guys on those old Resident Evil games. Uh, so I'm super excited for Evil Within Two. They also announced a DLC uh, for Dishonored Two. I didn't play Dishonored 2. I played the first one. I didn't really get into it. Not not a huge fan. Uh, but I know a lot of people love that game. And it has a big fan base. I was And I wasn't expecting anything like that. So uh, pretty cool. And then that was it. They they knocked out these games really fast. And then, hey, thanks for coming. Uh, and that was it. So I liked it. I liked the conference. Uh, I'll, give it a, I'll give it an A. Just the every game, even though there was only a few games, every game looked really good. And I'm normally playing a couple of them at least so i'll give this one a solid a uh what do you think brian yeah i, I really liked it too I, I like the way they presented their um, library through a, a theme park similar to like disneyland where um, there's different worlds so they talked about the, the world where vr games or vr games a world for dlcs and then a world for 
up in, like upcoming games like uh, Wolfenstein 2. Yeah, it was really um, cool. So, yeah, I, I, so I don't play any of their of their games. I never played Fallout 4. I missed uh, Doom. I didn't play Wolfenstein. I missed Evil Within. Within one. And after seeing this, like, uh, I, I might be interested in checking out these games that are coming out. So I I would give it a, a B, but it's mainly because I don't play these games. Um, but the presentation I I thought it was really good. Like if I if I were to grade the presentation by itself, uh, I would give it an A, sort of you know for showing a cartoonish uh, you know, theme park and and the time. You know I, they probably knew that. You know I don't know why they got that nine p.m. Yeah, that's Pacific weird. Time mid- midnight Eastern time time slot. That's, yeah, that's kind of weird. That's super late. Yeah, so maybe they they were aware of the time, so they just wanted to end it quickly and um, just wrapped it up in half an hour, but. They could have done that at 6 p.m. Pacific time, but, so it didn't make sense. But it was nice. I, I really liked it. After seeing these uh, these videos, I you know these uh, trailers, I I would be more inclined to check them out. Yeah, I, I highly recommend anyone go find those trailers. Wolfenstein 2, uh, Dishonored DLC, Evil Within 2, the Doom and Fallout VR stuff. Really, really cool stuff. So yeah, I, I like I like how they did that. It was short and sweet. Here's all these awesome games coming out soon. Uh, some of them really soon, right? Like uh, even within two was is yeah. is later this year. So yeah, I give I give Bethesda, um, I gave it an A. And like you said, the the Bethesda land, I was a little hesitant at first. I'm like, what are they doing? They have a, a theme park thing, and they're gonna take you around a theme park. And uh, but it worked. It worked. Um, yeah, no issues with this conference at all. I'm just checking out this uh, trailer for Evil Within Two. I I didn't see the conference at all, but. This trailer is creepy as fuck. And this, this is going to go ahead and make me go and buy an Xbox One X. Even though I won't be using all of its... Uh... I don't even have a 4K TV. <laughs> Get it. I'm playing, I'm playing out of my TV. point, dude. I, I know my guys are going to be convinced. <laughs> yeah, if you, got, if you guys can... Uh... My 1080p comes, plays perfect. <laughs> Yeah, if you guys want to uh, go back and play that first one, it is creepy and it's freaky as hell. Like half the time, I didn't know what's going on. Uh, it was freaking dope. I'm, I'm actually, I, I didn't know they were gonna debut Evil Within too, so I'm pretty excited. What I'm kind gonna, of game is it? Like, is it uh, first person? Third person? Uh, thir- third person over the shoulder. I'll, I'll head over to Jesse's house and play on his Xbox One X. Yeah. <laughs> on, 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 my, on my regular 1080p. Yeah, on your two uh, on your tube TV. Yeah. Hey, I got rid of those. <laughs> Actually, I should say that we have one outside. We have a 32 inch outside, but that's just for uh, outside viewing. So connected to the antenna. <laughs> so the the one the one uh, panel that I missed, uh, I didn't get a chance to, to see it was the Ubisoft panel. I, I, I was kind of bummed. I wanted to check out the Far Cry uh, stuff, but I know Brian's excited to talk about one game in particular. Uh, so go for it, Brian. Yeah, you're talking about Mario and Rabbits, right? Yeah, man. So that's the game I'm excited about. It's the crossover of the century. <laughs> hey, I thought that was cool. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> well, so the, these uh, Ubisoft um, conferences, they're pretty similar every year. Last year, they had this weird thing where they had like the developers or whoever sit on a couch and then they had like an interview. This, so I'm talking about last year. That was kind of weird. But looking at the one this year, I really miss uh, Aisha Tyler. She not the host this year and you know she i don't know if she's a gamer or not but it was really fun watching her just make fun of all the guys that came on stage and she was like a foot taller or at least it looked like she was a foot taller yeah yeah when came out standing <laughs> next to her. so that made things really funny and then she would make fun of the games too so i don't know so two years ago when they first brought her in she was making fun of all their games and i was surprised when it brought her back again last year but you know every time she's on like i it's always like really entertaining, entertaining for me. So, it was, um, I was a little bit bummed out this year, not seeing her there. But they kept their format where they had a guy come out and talk about each game, and instead of just show, selling the game by showing you gameplay, they had a guy just explain to you what the game is and all the mechanics and all that stuff. I think that's a little bit too technical. They didn't have to go into that kind of detail. Um, and, and we'll get into like Sony next, but. You know, they, they let the game speak for themselves, whereas Ubisoft, they, they want to, like, walk you through everything. 
and that's kind of what they they've always done um, when Watch Dogs Two uh, before it was released. They they show you all these little things that that you can do with um, with the character, and they're doing the same thing with with uh, this conference. So some of the things they showed was, was um, like as I mentioned, Mario and Rabbids. It looks like a tag type game where you you have a blaster like Mega Man and you hide behind stuff and you shoot your opponents. Not not my kind of game, but it looks cool. I guess uh, it, it's a good like uh, land party or like a small party type game. And they brought back the game um, the the Crew Two, which was a racing game where you race um, with a team of like three or four people across the country. I never played that game. Looking at this one, they added the new feature to have people fly a, a two passenger like those small planes above you in the city while you're driving on, on the road. I, I don't get that, um, <laughs> but it looks cool in the trailers. Um, but when you're actually sitting down to play, I don't know how that's going to work. And then they show this VR game called Transference. I guess it's like a horror game, and I guess uh, Elijah Wood has something to do with it. He's involved with the production company for this game. I don't know. It might be really scary, but I think I need to see more. And like John mentioned, they show Far Cry 5. Um, it looks pretty cool. I played part of, like, I didn't finish uh, Far Cry 4, but it, it has a little bit of all the standard, like, Ubisoft games. There's a little bit of Assassin's Creed, a little bit of Watch Dogs, and then, you know, they have their own little thing with Far Cry uh, where you can ride animals as a, as a vehicle. So that's always entertaining. And then they showed South Park, the game that was supposed to be released by now, uh, back in January, that got delayed until October, so hopefully they don't they don't slip again. So they show a new trailer where you know there it's like uh, two different superheroes. It's kind of like Captain America: Civil War, where you have two groups who are against each other, and they all have superpowers. And they show this one girl. She's like she has a bunch of cell phones on her, and her what was her like her superhero name was Call Girl, which is yeah. hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's, it's uh... Jimmy, like he's in, he's wearing a suit. Um, and he's like, you know, he's in a wheelchair, so he's Professor he's like X talking to Cartman like he's like Professor X. So <laughs> that was really funny. So. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to that game. Hopefully, it doesn't the date doesn't slip again. And then they showed um, Beyond Good and Evil Two. I don't know too much about this game, but it seems like everyone's really excited about it. And from what I saw, it looked kind of weird. There's like this giant like pig character and. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, as a um, British and a British monkey. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, I, I don't. I didn't play. I've never played Beyond Good and Evil. I know a lot of people love it. I I wish I can comment more on it, but I don't know anything about it. Yeah. So for for this one, I would uh, for Ubisoft, I would give it like a C. I mean, it wasn't awful, but they sh they showed everything that that they're supposed to. Everything looks fine. I I just don't like the the time that they spend walking everyone through all their games. Yeah. You could just show the, the game and let it speak for itself. Yeah, if you get too tech heavy, that gets boring really quick. I get it. The fractured butthole. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. It took me a second. <laughs> While you were talking, I was looking at the trailer. Uh, I guess like you were saying, it was supposed to have been released a while back. Yeah. Um, hopefully, it, it, the delay means that it's a better game. But, yeah. Uh, the trailer basically just looks like a bunch of cosplayers gone awry, but combined with, with uh, South Park, so that's pretty cool. But I get it. <laughs> oh. Yeah, the cool the cool thing about that game is like the animation is so simple, right? Like, yeah, that's the that's the game. Like, they don't have to make the like the cutscene videos look different, like in high high CGI like quality. Like that's the game. Like they don't have to do anything extra to make the game look good. Yeah, it's like you're, it's like you're, it's like it's you're playing, it's like you're playing an episode. Yeah, yeah. And I, what I saw too was cool, and I, I didn't, I just found out about this today is that when you buy this game, you get the first one, you get Stick of Truth for free. Yeah, I was gonna actually say that. that yeah. Uh, Pre-order it. That's cool. I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't play the first one, so that's yeah, pretty cool. Like, you gotta get on that one. That game is fun too. Yeah, I know, I know, I messed up on that one. So it's actually really cool that they're throwing in the, the first one. I can catch up. But there's no way to play it. <laughs> so the next panel was the one that i was most excited about being a sony fan and that was of course the sony panel that's why i keep calling these panels but they're not panels it's conferences i gotta break that habit but i think it's too late now um, it's all that comic con stuff yeah yeah comic con's coming well, it's coming up panels. soon and i got that that vocabulary is already it's just ingrained in my head love love this conference 
what what Sony's been really good at the last few years is just showing the games and getting out of getting out of the way, right? I think a few years ago, three four years ago, they were they were really focused on the hardware. Remember, they were like, "Oh, the PS yeah. Move and the PSI and then VR and blah blah blah." And a lot of the fans were like, "Hey, come on, man! Like, we just want to see these games." So the last few years, they've been really good at just getting out of the way. So the president guy, uh, Sean something, come came out in the beginning, introduced himself, himself introduced the system. And then just left. And then there was just an hour straight of just games. And then he came out at the end of it and was like, hey, thanks for watching. That's it. Big surprise for me was the Horizon DLC. I know in our, our prediction, uh, Brian brought it up as what he wanted to see. And I kind of was brushed it off pretty easily. Like, nah, they're not going to show Horizon. The game just came out. And nope, DLC coming out uh, later this year. And what they showed looked great. Doesn't look like it's going to be a minor DLC. It actually looks like... It's gonna pick up from the last game. That's what looked. That's what looked from uh, to me. Anyway, I don't want to spoil anything. But did it look, did it look like that to you, Brian? Did it look like it was like yeah, just it, yeah. It looks like um, you go further north on the map and you explore a, an area that wasn't available in the first game or in the uh, full game. Yeah. So I mean, it's like it looks like it just picks right up, and so yeah. super excited for that. I'm especially since it was unexpected. So Horizon uh, looked great. Big fan of the first game. So looking forward to that, and then. Uh, they showed the Uncharted, some more Uncharted of DLC, which is going to be more than DLC, almost not quite a full game, but pretty close. Uh, they showed more interaction with the two characters, Chloe and Nadine from the other games. That looked cool. I wish they would show some more gameplay, but I mean, that's fine. Those games sell themselves, so you soon just put the name Uncharted on it and I'm sold. What I was excited about was God of War. They showed a lot of God of War uh, gameplay, story, and it looks like the your son that's with you looks like he's going to help you during fights. It looked like there was one part where a bunch of enemies surrounded him and he pulled out his bow and arrow too. So I'm interested to see is like, can you control him and like maybe give him commands to help you out? Or does he just go off on his own? I, uh, I, I hope he's not the type where type of character where you have to keep him alive. That would be pretty frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. If that doesn't happen. Yeah. I hope he just goes out there and just fights and okay. kills a couple of bad guys too. And they showed a lot more of the combat system. And that was what I wanted to see because the other games, it was like the camera was pulled way back. We talked about this before in the other podcast where the camera was up kind of high, almost top down. Um, and I wanted to see how it looked uh, over the shoulder. And it looked it looked great. It seemed it looks like the camera will come in and out depending on how many uh, characters there are and how big the character was. But Kratos, looked, he looked great fighting just like in all the other games. And huge fan of the other games. So I was super excited to see that. And Again, if you can check it out on YouTube, uh, the game trailer, go for it. It's It looks great. Hey, John, did you catch the – maybe it was me, but did you see that giant Thor's hammer that that looked like it was like 10 stories tall? Yeah, I did. I did. It was a giant hammer, yeah. but it looked like a building. Yeah. And so if, if Thor is that size, that would be freaking awesome. Yeah, that would be great. I, and I saw it, and I was like, no, that's not it. <laughs> But I was like, is it? Is it the hammer? It looked like a hammer. Uh, when they found the Midgard Serpent at the end of the trailer and it starts talking to him and stuff. And that thing is huge too. So that's a, the mortal enemy of Thor. So if it's that thing is huge and Thor is that huge, man, that's, I wonder if he's going to be like the final boss or something. The other game was Days Gone, which is what they announced it last year. Um, another uh, zombie type style game. I was kind of like, well, another zombie game, you know, how are they going to make this one different? And as I was watching the, gameplay trailer there was a scene where the main character finds an enemy camp like a bandit camp walks up to their wall that they made their makeshift wall blows it up and when it blows up a horde of zombies comes in and eats the bandit camp so if you can use those zombies and stuff as weapons like that during the game that's that's pretty cool so after seeing that i was i was sold on that game too yeah and these are the uh, world war z zombies not the walking dead zombies Right, so they, yeah. They're all running. They run in, run in a, a herd. Yeah, and they're and they like they trip and fall over each other, but they yeah. just keep moving and running over each other, and they pile up really fast. Yeah, that that was uh, that was pretty cool. The uh, the other game from the developers of uh, Heavy Rain, uh, Detroit. At first, I was like, "What the? What game is this?" You know, I didn't quite get it. Uh, but it's it's like an Android revolution in the future, and you play as one of the androids. I didn't. I wasn't really pulled into the story when I was watching this uh, this trailer. But I am a big fan of Heavy Rain, so I'll probably give this one a shot. Beyond was, wasn't was too hot. Um, I borrowed that game from Brian. And did you end up finishing it or not? No. I still need to go back and finish it. I'm like so close. <laughs> but 
but uh, Heavy Rain was really good, so I'll probably give this one a shot. Um, they showed other games like Monster Hunter World, which it looked cool. I'm not a huge fan of the, that series, but it looked great. Call of Duty World War II, and uh, looks like they're giving a graphical uh, update to uh, Shadow of the Colossus. Yeah. The cool as well. Um, but then the conference closed out on Spider-Man. And if you haven't seen the gameplay trailer for Spider-Man, go see it right now. The game looks amazing. Uh, they showed gameplay and story. And the gameplay kind of looks like a cross between like Arkham, uh, Sunset Overdrive, and like a little Uncharted. Like you can attack a group of villains at once and you're webbing them up. And it's totally non-lethal because it's Spider-Man. So like he kicks a guy off the building, but then he webs them and brings them back and then sp- sprays them down against the floor. And he's jumping around. Uh, doing these crazy fighting moves like he looks like spider-man uh, and they swing it through the city after a helicopter and then there's debris and you can catch a web up the debris to make sure it doesn't fall on the ground it just it looked it looked amazing um again go check it out uh, i'm not doing it justice by explaining it you gotta watch it yeah uh, and, and there's also that one part with the crane where you had to keep it from falling yeah he, he would like like shoot his web on different points of, points of the crane to stop it from falling into the to the street level, so that was pretty cool. Yeah, like he's running on it, and then he's webbing it, attaching yeah. it to other buildings, so it'll stick to other buildings as he's running on it, so it wouldn't fall. Yeah, crazy, crazy stuff. So the conference finished super strong. Uh, I loved how they just show these games. They didn't, no one was in there talking about them. They just showed it to you. Um, got got me super excited for it. So their conference overall was strong. I give it an A. What do you think, Brian? Yeah, I, I like that they they did something that all the other conferences did not do which is they just let the games speak for themselves they just show a lot of exclusive and then you know they, they have a deal with destiny where they always have these like ex- exclusive content that's only available on the ps4 um but a lot of the games that they show that it's only on ps4 they know not to sh- you know there's no point for them to show games that you can play on on other consoles and they were able to fill that hour with just their games yeah, I, I I thought that Uncharted looked really good. I'm looking forward to that. Horizon, yeah. I thought once I finished the game, I got the Platinum Trophy. I was done with it. But um, it's nice for them to add in a DLC. Hopefully, it'll add like five to ten hours to the game. Because I, I missed the game already. It's just that there's nothing else for me to do. So um, for them to add more content, a little bit more story, then that would extend the life of that game and kind of make it cut the time for them to... From, from now until they, they release the second game. And yeah, Days Gone, when I saw the game last year, it looked like it was like a biker type game and then they didn't really show that much of zombies. So they, they spent the time to show a, it felt like a 10 to 15 minute trailer on on the gameplay. And, and you mentioned like, you know, he breaks into a camp to save a guy and he was able to use the, the environment to distract uh, the camp to, to free the guy that he was, you know, that was captured. So the zombies look cool. Like they were able to show me something that that got me excited about the game. And then they went to a lot of these VR games. So I don't own a VR headset. Um, I'm, I still feel like it's not there yet. Instead of showing a sizzle reel, they spent like a minute for each game. Like they really want to push VR. But from what I saw, I, I, I feel like it's not there yet. Even though it, it looks like, but they've made a lot of progress from from the past year, from launch. So I think um, maybe in another year or by PSX at the end of the year, um, they might have something that's more that's more exciting, that's more uh, something that's more exciting for for people to want to get a VR headset and play. But from from all those games, the one that really stood out to me was uh, Final Fantasy XV, the fishing game. <laughs> <laughs> I had a, a VR headset, I would be all over that game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they show yeah, him catching like this big monster fish thing. Right, and then the fish like jumps at you. And, yeah, it, it's, it's silly, but whatever. Um, yeah, I spent probably 10 to 15 hours grinding the fishing part of that game. It's so. <laughs> <laughs> another reason I'm avoiding that damn yeah. game. I, I think when you were here um, um, to visit, I was playing the game, I was like fishing. I, so you didn't really see anything. You, you just saw me like standing there fishing and just throwing out a line and stuff. So. Yeah, I was like, I'm going to bed later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, so, yeah, everything else uh, you pretty much covered. Yeah, like the Spider-Man game, I like that. 
Um, he doesn't kill anyone, so it, it stays true to the character. Whereas Batman, like in Arkham, in Arkham games, he he probably kills those guys. Like, <laughs> yeah. You know, like, yeah, he jacks them up. Dude. <laughs> Once they're on the ground, like they're not getting up. Like, <laughs> yeah. Um, so it, it's nice that you know he he just like webs them up. Like there's this one part where he's on on top of a beam. He like pulls this guy in, and then he like creates a web cocoon, and he just keeps him there. Yeah, and then the whole thing about like stopping the crane, and then the the back part of the helicopter from from hitting innocent people. I thought that was really cool. It makes me wonder if this is a truly open world game, or or it's pretty linear with an open like city map. But my guess is it will probably be like open world where you have to go to a, a starting point and then go from there, just like a Grand Theft Auto type game. Yeah, so for that... the Sony conference, I would give it a, a B, uh, um, because they let, they let all the games do the talking. They don't have any new hardware to sell, so they don't have to stand out there. Now people like sell you these new hardware that that you know takes a lot of convincing and a lot of like uh, marketing to to get into people's mind. So they they have they didn't have to do that do that this year, and that I think that really helped them. Um, they didn't show anything that's extremely new they, there was no new ip but i'm okay with that for this year just focus on the game that they're working on now you know like have uh, death stranding ready you know next year or two kingdom hearts you know things like that but from what they showed it was it was enough to get me through the next year from what they have yeah it seemed like they they announced a lot last year yeah like all those games uh were announced spider-man the God of War, Days Gone. That was all last year stuff, but it was cool to see that they made progress and they're able to show more to keep you uh, excited for it. And right. it w- and then it wasn't part of the conference, but the fact that they're bringing PSX back to Anaheim this year that gets me excited because right down the street, I don't have to fly anywhere. Brian does, but I don't. I can just <laughs> <laughs> drive down the street and check out uh, PSX, and it was a lot of fun last year. So I'm glad that it's back. While you guys have been uh, talking, I've kind of been looking at some of the uh, press conference for Sony. I just finished the video for seeing Days Gone. Sons of Anarchy meets World War Z. <laughs> <laughs> and then I and and he, I'm trying to figure out if that was a Vato or another biker <laughs> that he was trying to save. I think it was a Vato, uh, dude. I think it was. He's a Vato, right? Yeah, yeah that's, that's what it looked like. Yeah, my people got represented in Sony. <laughs> Not the main guy. Not the main guy. Not the main guy. The, the one that was captured. So was yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> What's up with a bear that's a zombie? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a zombie bear. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. That was cool. Yeah, dude, I saw that. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Peter's not going to be too happy about this. <laughs> like barbed wire on him. That, that's yeah, awesome. it, was pretty, it was pretty cool. I was like, okay, well, you can't go ahead and go right up to it. You're going to have to like shoot it or something from far away or you'll get hurt. So. That's pretty cool, and like you said, I, I like the fact that you can interact with the with the world to go ahead and uh, distract or to meet your objectives. I also got to see the Uncharted trailer part. I guess they started it off with some kind of Indian musical thing, and then it went into the video gameplay and stuff. And the video uh, cutscenes and everything were really cool. Is Uncharted all about these two chicks? Uh, they just the game. Uh, just, so the, just this uh, this DLC is. They were they were oh, supporting yeah. characters in the the other four. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, because at first I was like, wait, they're too dark and ethnic to be Lara Croft, so this isn't a Lara Croft movie. Oh, I don't care no more. <laughs> uh, the other thing, um, Spider-Man, Sp- I, I have to agree with you guys, I, I like the gameplay, um, I like the, um, uh, uh, the, the trailer they showed us was gameplay. It wasn't just cutscenes and stuff like that. It was it was gameplay, so I kind of like that. The thing I didn't like was the costume. Uh. I know that you said that it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's uh, exclusive to to them. What the hell? The costume. <laughs> if, if, you want, if you want the go ahead and, and be true to the nature of a Spidey. He's he's cracking jokes in the video. He's talking to Fist. So so there's there's characters we know. Even at the end, they, um, they cameo Miles. I mean, l- leave the suit alone. <laughs> make a Venom black or or keep the OG suit. Come on. 
I mean, that's the reason why when I was looking at him, I was, I was like, wait, is this amazing Spider-Man? Spectacular Spider-Man? What kind of Spider-Man is he? And you obviously told me it's exclusive Spider-Man. Sold out Spider-Man. <laughs> Sold out Spider-Man. <laughs> Might as well just put the PS sign on his, uh, on his back somewhere. <laughs> put the Insomniac sign? Yeah, I mean, it, you know, Sony loves their exclusive stuff. You know, they make they make up the technology and stuff that only works on your shit. Maybe the Spidey only works on their payroll. <laughs> That's a fat check, but, dude. Yeah, uh, but Spidey doesn't care. If that was the case, he wouldn't be a photographer. <laughs> if Spidey cared about money, he would have been working for the Narcos. For the what? For the Narcos. <laughs> what a mule. <laughs> He would have he would have gotten El Chapo out, <laughs> got paid. Mary J. Watson, where are you? Let's go. <laughs> yeah. So uh yeah, I mean I'm I'm not a a fat boy of uh PlayStation uh, consoles. I have played uh a PS4 recently because uh, we've we've done a few console gaming through my uh, meetup and it's it's pretty cool. I mean uh I would uh I'd play some of these games if I've actually owned the, the device. A three hundred dollar device. But, um, oh, another no. thing, another thing that uh, they showed and I forgot, and it was something I was I was interested in is they showed more Marvel vs. Capcom four, mm-hmm. and they introduced a bunch of new characters: Black Panther, Gamora, uh, Thanos. Oh, Thanos looks like a playable character. Still no X Men. Yeah, because you said that. Earlier. Yeah, there's uh, still no, still no X Men. They put in a lot of new characters, and I I don't see any. So I'm starting to think that there won't be a Wolverine or a Deadpool. <laughs> and then the last game they had for the Fantastic Four, you had Super Scroll, right? And he had all their powers. Uh, so far, I don't see any Fantastic Four characters as well. So it looks like the rumors might be true that they're not going to include any characters that aren't under their uh, movie studios. I, I like that um, that cutscene where Dante like throws his guns to, to to Rocket, and he's like using them. So that I don't know if, if that will be available in the game or that was just for the cutscene, but. I thought that, that looked pretty cool. Oh, yeah, if that's like a help in the game, like you can switch weapons or something? I don't know. I mean, it was a cutscene video, though, so I don't know. You know, like Dante just throws his two like pistols at a rocket, and he's like using them. Yeah. And so the last conference of the show, which really isn't a conference at all, it's Nintendo. Uh, what they've been doing the last couple of years is pre-recording a short video uh, package of their games that they got coming out, only about 20, 25 minutes long. Uh, they showed that today, uh, earlier today. Um, I'm not a Nintendo guy. I mean, I was when I was a little kid. I played crap load of Mario and everything. I love love Nintendo, but after the GameCube is when I kind of stepped away. So this was actually the first Nintendo conference that I've watched the last few years, and it was it was fun. It's fine. It's cool. Um, um, they have good games. Nintendo has good games. Legend of Zelda, which just came out. Again, I'm not a, a Zelda guy. I know how awesome that game is considered a classic already one of the best games ever made and they also announced a new mario game called mario odyssey which looks really cool um looks like you can throw your hat onto different characters and you throw your hat on a frog and you become a frog so i guess they're gonna do that instead of the old suits from back from super mario Bros. 3 Mm -hmm. oh that looks pretty cool i'm i was more interested in in those games because uh my nephew is gonna be five and one of my eventually I'm gonna get him a Switch, and I, so I'm really looking at these games more for him. Uh, so Mario Odyssey looks good. The Yoshi game looks like it could be a lot of fun uh, for a younger audience. Uh, other than that, I'm I was just more like, oh, okay, you know, it's Nintendo, it's some cool stuff. Not really interested uh, in those games, but uh, overall, for being a 20 minute video uh, showing off cool stuff, it's it's cool. It was fine. Um, I wish I was more of a fan of Nintendo so I can get more hyped for it. As a grade, I'll give it a I'll give it a B. Just because it was short and sweet, showed you a lot of games. Um, I'm just not excited for those games. So, uh, Brian, what'd you think? Yeah, I'll give it a B as well. Yeah, some of the games, a lot of the games that are on there didn't really appeal to me. They they sh- they're extending the life of uh, the Zelda game with two DLCs, and I don't think they showed it enough to to really show what what's in that DLC. It looked like it was like a small level pack, like the master trials. Is that, is that just like a trial, like a, like a ladder type thing where you just fight your way up or, you know, it, it didn't show, didn't give enough information. Mario, Mario Odyssey looks great. So I think that would be the next, the only game that I'm excited about 
the Yoshi game looks cool, um, but it's a platformer. Um, I'm not sure how 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 much uh, time I would spend if I were if I were to play that game. But the one game I was excited about was uh, Metro Prime Four. They all they do all they did was just show the title, um, <laughs> but it's enough to kind of string me along for a little bit longer um, with this whole Switch thing. Um, so I, I can't wait to see what they have in store for that game. So next thing they need they need to announce is some start some sort of Star Fox game. But yeah, it, it was a good show. It, like you said, it's short. Um, it's always like very entertaining to watch. Um, they just uh, slap a bunch of things together in a very short time, just throw all the games at you, and then and then it just ends, which is perfect. So I yeah, I would give this a, a B as well. And uh, when when you get in the Switch, man, I know you're dying to play that Zelda game. I don't know. It's not <laughs> high on my list. So I already got the Xbox, so that's setting me back. It pushed it down the list a little bit further. <laughs> so if if they uh, so if, once they get a couple more games, like let's say they get Metroid Prime out and uh, the, the the Mario game comes out, and then Zelda with all this DLC, once it gets a nicer library, you think that's when you'll probably jump on it? Yeah. Because right now, like if I if I jump in now just to get Zelda, um, it would probably cost it would cost like four or five hundred dollars after buying all the accessories and all that stuff. So right, it's a it's a pretty uh, high investment to start, you know, because they it, the console starts at a uh, reasonable price, but then once you get all these accessories, then it kind of adds up to the price of the Xbox One X. So yeah, I, I need to see more games first before I can go all in on on that one i don't know there's a couple of games here that i was looking at um they might not have been showcased in the uh in the conference but there's some games that i might have to buy for my little brother uh there's a pokemon game that's coming to the switch my little brother's a pokemon that cards i mean john's talked to him yeah yeah it's pretty funny he just will talk and talk to you know, about pokemon you you're ignoring him, and he's still. Uh, <laughs> about I love my brother, but he's just, he's just a, a great fan. And then, I mean, how are you not gonna go and get this game with the cross-dressing rabbits and Mario? <laughs> I don't understand that. Zelda, I I I was looking at the gameplay. Forget that rabbits, <laughs> rabbits, cross-dressing. I mean, that's almost as good as the South Park game right there. I mean. And then, and then this uh, Odyssey game, he gets to put a Mexican hat on. Yeah, yeah, he oh. did. He put on the Mexican hat. He was flying around with it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he better be careful not to get to the United States because Donald Trump will report his ass or make him build a wall, but... He can put... Uh, he... That's a special power. Right? <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't catch what, what kind of power he had with the, with the hat. It just, it just looked like he was flying. It like he was flying, and the, the hat was spinning like a like a helicopter. It looked like. Okay. Are you sure it wasn't the gas coming from the burritos that made? Maybe. <laughs> so so the, so the switch yeah. the switch for you is a must buy now. It it, it looks it's not that I'm gonna be able to play it because my brother won't let me uh, touch it. But I'm I'm surprised on the um, the animation on having such a small console. Because there was a Kirby game in there too. Yeah, there was. And, yeah, and I never liked Kirby. Just so you guys know, ever since I was a kid, I'm like, this little this thing's stupid. Oh yeah, it's yeah, stupid. yeah. <laughs> you, you can become, you can. He also cross dresses into Zelda. So. <laughs> I, I apparently anyone can become Zelda. Well, Zelda so. is a princess, not the guy, yes. not the character. You can That's Link, play. dude. So, Link, yeah, Link, yeah, so, yeah. Anyone we'll can become it. this. <laughs> Whoa, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> I'm defensive about that game. So, it's like Frankenstein. I'm offended, I'm offended by monster. your insults. <laughs> so, but, uh, yeah, I like said, um, I was at a, at a at another nerd meetup, and they had a Switch, and I was pretty surprised on, on the quality of the uh, of the dis- display. It's it's a mobile entertainment. You yeah. Know. So even when it's off the dock, it still looks pretty good, right? Yeah, I mean they, they were they, they weren't they weren't they didn't have it on the dock. They were like showing because they were going around. This is a, another nerd meetup, so everyone was obviously showing off uh, games. There was some anime game that they were playing. I don't know which one it was, and I, I was surprised uh, at how 
beautiful the display was. I was like, wow, that looks better than any smartphone I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> but and and then I I did want to go ahead and bring up a, a, something that I had talked about earlier uh, before. Uh, Rocket League, uh, Nintendo is going to go ahead and join the bandwagon with Microsoft and make Rocket League a cross network play. So you're able to play against people who aren't on the Switch. So I think that's yeah, kind of pretty badass. Yeah, but your car has like a Mario hat. You have the Switch version. <laughs> hey, that's cool. I want a Mario hat. <laughs> Mostly when you're playing the soccer game. That's even yeah. better. <laughs> I don't know if you guys ever played Rocket League, but Rocket League, I get kick ass in the hockey. I can't. I suck at, at both the basketball and the, uh, the soccer versions of it. But for some reason, I, I'll hockey on the bomb. On <laughs> and for those who don't know me, I'm Mexican. I should, I should have the, the, the soccer one. Oh, I'm sorry. El football one. <laughs> yeah. You should have talked more about FIFA earlier. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, 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 I am one of those rare Mexicans who don't want to get deported. Don't want to bring any attention to me. <laughs> that I, I, for one I, didn't, I didn't think about what you just said. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to be deported. <laughs> All right, I think I think Jesse's losing it. I think we got to wrap this up now. Eleven <laughs> thirty. So overall, Brian, what'd you think? What'd you think about E three two thousand seventeen? I give it a C um, because there's yeah, and the reason why is because there's. They, they didn't show anything that was new. And like I said earlier, this was a year for Microsoft to come out and blow everyone away with a, with a Scorpio or Xbox One X. And they kind of fell flat with the games that they followed it up with and, and the pricing point. Um, I didn't say this earlier, but when they announced the price, I thought it was hilarious when uh, Phil Spencer was like getting everyone excited. Like, we have the Xbox One S at 249 Yeah! And then the one Xbox One X at four ninety nine, and everyone's like, uh, yeah. It, it kind of, yeah, it got a little bit awkward. Yeah, yeah, you can um, everyone like, uh, you can hear the ah oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and I read an article later on, like you know they were saying like uh, Microsoft was smart not to show the price on the screen because then people would screenshot it and just go wild on the internet. Just rip on it. it. Yeah. Yeah. So it, yeah, they 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 knew they would kind of get some. Uh, uh, re- negative response about it, but yeah, I, maybe it's too early. But it's just the the price point and and the library that that goes with that console. It's not. It's too early. I mean, it, it's better that they have it than to not than not have it at all. But I think they should have spent some more time developing more games for it. But we'll see. In the next year or two, we'll have to revisit it and see where where they are by then. Um, I'm gonna have to agree with you. I'm gonna have to give the conference overall a C nothing really jumped out like there was no big announcements for anything any of the panels it was all stuff uh we've already heard about before and i'm I'm not saying that you know that's a bad thing these uh i love bethesda's conference i love sony's conference uh just a bunch of great games like you said the ea conference was pretty pretty mediocre it was kind of a bad way to kick off the the whole thing microsoft's was disappointing ubisoft was boring so overall i would say a c a uh, lot of cool games. Every year is always cool games. Nothing this year to really like jump out and say, "Oh my god, did you see that at E3? Did you see that?" Nothing like that. Like, there's always that one moment, right? Every year, there's always one thing that everyone just gets super, super hyped about. And this year, not really. It's just a lot of a lot of stuff we've seen before. Uh, a lot of good stuff, but nothing crazy, nothing mind blowing. So overall, I say it was fine. It was a fine E3. So I'll give it a C as well. Um. Obviously, I can't go ahead and give any grades because I, I didn't watch all the conferences. I basically watched the... I'm not a big console player just because I'm broke and I can't buy those uh, consoles. <laughs> Mostly uh, Xbox X. But I can build computers, so I play uh, PC games when I can. I, I do love a lot of the cutscenes that, that they've done for some of the, the games I like. You know, I'm into Spider-Man. You know, I'm a comic book guy, so uh, Spider-Man other than the suit was pretty cool. Marvel vs. Capcom, pretty some pretty cool cutscenes and stuff too. I I've loved Nintendo since it came out. You know, I that was one of my first consoles. 
you know, so I kind of like some of the Nintendo stuff. Mostly, like I said, it'll be for my brother, but still. I think they came out with some good stuff, but I can't give a grade because, like you guys, you guys watch these every year, so you have something to compare it to. But, I mean, as, as a first time as a newbie, I, I did like uh, the money, uh, the effort that gets into some of these uh, video games. And sometimes people complain, it's like, oh my god, these games are like 50 bucks. But some of the artwork and some of the uh, the scenes on this, it's worth the game. If the, if, I mean, there's obviously some games that have crappy storylines, and you, you understand that's the reason why people rent games. But uh, some of these other stuff, uh, like Uncharted, I was making it fun of it, but it actually looked like some really cool uh, gameplay and, and uh, just cutscenes. So. So it's for everyone, support your developers. <laughs> All right, guys, this was a, a long one. We had a lot to talk about. Uh, we always get excited about E3 every year. Too bad it's already over. Yeah, I'm always looking forward to more games. So with that, we'll end it. Um, we'll see you guys later. Uh, stay tuned for our next podcast. Not sure what we'll be about yet, but we'll get one up for you pretty soon. So later, guys. Later. All right. See you.